What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Shopper Channel, coming to you with another edition of Ladies Leans, Likes, and Locks! Fourth of July edition. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. My friends, come on. Yes, I missed a lock. It happens from time to time. Like, what... It's going to happen. The under got obliterated, and then people coming at me, oh, they put up 14 runs, it looks crazy. You understand? An under can only ever look so bad, but an over can look exponentially horrendous comparatively. Like, why is that a thing? It shouldn't matter. Everything is win or lose when it comes down to it. Obviously, you have your pushes that you run into, but at the end of the day, what I'm here to do is help you win at a higher clip then you lose, especially when we're talking about standard juice minus 110, especially when we're talking about money lines, trying to find value in things. I am here to try to help you be a better better, and I apologize. I'm going to be missing locks. That's just the way that it works. Everybody loves the word locks, but it doesn't mean guarantee. What it means is it's my favorite play on the board. That's the system leans, likes, locks. I'm here. I'm on this program. I'm giving you my best every single day, and I'm sorry. It makes me feel terrible when the results aren't always there, but you have to know that comes with the territory. We had a horrendous, I had a personally horrendous, April and May. June was red hot, leading us into the 4th of July, which, again, we've got this week, and then the All-Star break. I'll be coming to probably with a Tuesday. Lindy's leans, likes, and locks for that All-Star game, of course. Maybe talking a little home run derby beforehand as well, but... I'm here to give you my best every single day. It's going to be nice to recharge the batteries because sometimes, well, it's just annoying. It's annoying. I understand that there were a lot of runs scored early. It was terrible for me. It was terrible all around. But over a long period of time, let's just win. Cool? Sounds great. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. Check out BetMGM. Great stuff going on with them. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. If you want to get a head start, there's a link below. Two free months of Odd Shopper Discord access, my betting card every single Sunday through Friday, letting you know exactly where I land on everything. I'm there throughout the day answering questions. You got questions? I've hopefully got answers, but if I'm not able to answer it all at once, because you know a lot of people hitting me up on Twitter, at Eric Lindquist, or in the Premium Discord, what I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to update your locks every single time. That is what I'm there to do every single Monday through Friday on my Twitter at Eric Lindquist with Lindy's Locks Update. I've really enjoyed talking through things. We started talking about craps today because probabilities and overs and unders. and Well, it's a whole thing. It's a beautiful thing. I don't always get that opportunity to talk through how I land on my bets. And I think that is exponentially more important long term for your profitability than me just giving you plays. And so come check that out. I'll talk through the locks, talk to you about it. if anything changes. Sometimes you get some downgrades because my goal here is to give you closing line value to help you beat the books over a long period of time. We got producer Jacob here, 4th of July. Now I'm feeling good. Now I'm feeling ready for fireworks, even though they're the most overrated thing in the world. Friends, let's get to the next. Heading to Washington, D.C. for a little bit of morning baseball, some kegs and eggs. Going to be beautiful stuff in our nation's capital with Reds, Nationals. You know what's not going to be beautiful? The two projected starting pitchers for this one. We only have one who's officially announced, that being Patrick Corbin. Oh, my goodness. What a beautiful time to be alive when the Cincinnati Reds, the red-hot Cincinnati Reds, come to town to take on Corbin. His nearly 4.85 ERA, 1.54 whip. He has been better of late. You just saw seven strong innings there uh, in Seattle, but Seattle, number one in terms of avoiding run creation. They are the it's the best pitchers park in baseball. Flat out, period, end of story. Nine Ks, seven innings pitched. What in the world? Just spinning. Just spinning it. DJ, spin that, you know what. But it's not like I don't say shit on this program all the time, whatever. But on the other side is kind of the guy that is a little bit more of an unknown as far as what we could be expecting. It's expected to be Brett Kennedy. He's a triple-A guy who has some decent numbers in the minors. 3.71 ERA, 43 and two-thirds over the course of that triple-A stint. He's 28, though. Never great when somebody gets added to a taxi squad and then is going to possibly show up at 28 years old. That creates a problem. Because Washington, they've actually been pretty good against lefties. And you just happen to be some random righty, Brett Kennedy. So I need a little bit of run support here from the Nationals. But it's supposed to be hot and humid. It's supposed to be beautiful. It's the 4th of July out in 
Washington, D.C. You think that they aren't going to hit the over for us in this one? You're crazy. I'm telling you, you're crazy. I have this nearly 12 runs because Patrick Corbin, whatever you saw last time out, that is one start. We have a much larger sample size this season of him being terrible, no good, very bad, and targetable. That's the most important part. 515 expected slugging, 379 x Woba, and he's left-handed in Cincinnati. We've just seen... Up, up, up. Now 100 WRC plus. I drink your milkshake. I wanted to do that for fun. It's just how I am. I'm nerdy like it. Daniel Day-Lewis. Salute. He's English, so it doesn't count on 4th of July. But either way, he's the GOAT. There you go. This is going to goat out. The one lock on the board is the first game of the day at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Get your tickets in, friends. There's no way this doesn't move to 11. I would be shocked absolutely floored absolutely beside myself if 11 isn't the prevailing number across the industry right now but it's 10 and a half of points bet producer jacob actually the one who found the line for me right from the get-go shout out my guy shout out my producer out here doing work and we're gonna do work 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 gonna see me in a dirt 10 and a half your lock of the day well this is shitty so 14 more games and um <clears throat> No more locks, so we're going to talk through all of them. Hey, friends, stay with me. Stay with me. We're going to have some fun. Actually, I've got a lot of plays, and then we have a like very dark, absent middle of this day. And then we're going to go out with a little bit of a bang. Fireworks, if you will, even though they suck. Um, already established that, but this is interesting. Baltimore and the Yankees. 3-2 right now as they're playing at this given time and moment. That doesn't do you any good. We are looking, though, at two awful pitchers in Kyle Gibson and Casey. Uh, sorry, can't even say his name right because it doesn't matter that much. Clark Schmidt. Oh, Clark. National Lampoon. Don't mind me. Kyle Gibson, 43.8% hard hit percentage, 275 expected batting average, which is just an 18% K rate. He goes in that bucket of pitchers I just don't trust in this starting unit for Baltimore. Just get me to the pen, specifically two guys in that pen. You know who they are. Clark Schmidt on the other side, though. Disappointment of New York City. He was expected to be the guy. He has been the opposite of the guy. 44.3% hard hit percentage, 422 expected slugging. Has some issues that we'll probably discuss at a later date. Um, there's a lot to get to with Clark Schmidt, I think. It's just, I don't think he has a primary pitch that's going to work out for him. He doesn't have a go-to. It's a sinker, cutter, curve. And there's just a lot of mishmash. I like to see it when a pitcher has a prevailing fa fastball, something that they can lean on. Because everybody needs somebody to lean on, lean on me. Actually, we're not even leaning. We're liking. We're liking the over. See how I did that? Eight and a half. Pretty straightforward play. Got this around 9.3 and 12. Prefer this was a... Prefer this was eight. I'd rather get that hook. But either way, I'm all right with the over of eight and a half here. Just a half unit play for me. We're going to Miami. I've done this bit way too much. There we go. So we're just going to talk about the game, shall we? Cool. Jesus Lazardo, lefty, spin that, going up against Adam Wainwright, who, oh man. Oh man. 7.45 ERA, 1.95 whip. It's, it's over. I, I feel really bad. I, I don't know what he could do to recapture it. And to be fair, last season, he was unbelievable in a lot of ways. Uh, just completely surpassed all expectations you could have for him. And he still had a 4.53 exp expected ERA. Yeah, 3.71 ERA. Looked good in the box score. But you know what happens eventually over a long sample size? It just gets away from you. And that's what's happened for one of the best pitchers in St. Louis history there. 7.55 expected ERA this season. 7.45 actual ERA. So we can expect even worse numbers going forward. The nice thing here is, of course... Miami, good ballpark to be pitching in. This is a Miami team that's definitely going to be making contact with the ball. Definitely has some power uh, up and down. It's just, it's not good. It's an emerging baseball team in the Finns. So we're going to be staring clear of the atmosphere over anything that has to do with St. Louis. We're going to be looking at the Miami side. And I really do like Hazel Cesardo. Always have, always will. The K stuff, 28.4% K rate, 6.1% walk rate, 295 X Woba. He's really freaking good. But as I was projecting this out, minus 150 currently, the best available number 
over on the money line at DraftKings. And in a Lindy's Locks update, once upon a time, we covered why it is certain ballparks just have a larger disparity between the one and a half run mark. But when you have a starting pitcher where more times than not, they're putting earned runs up on the board, it's hard not to get a little bit aggressive in these spots. And well, you're looking at normally around a hundred cent difference between the money line to the run line. That's just like a ballpark. <laughs> Literally, it has to do with the ballpark and implied run total, but we'll get to that another day. What I'm getting at here is I like going to the run line in an aggressive fashion, plus 135, the current best available number over at DraftKings Sportsbook. So only an 85 cent difference. And yet I'm still willing to pay it. Still want to get aggressive because Adam Wainwright He's just spotting you a couple runs almost every single time that he goes out there and literally tees it up for you. Driver off the deck. No, it's Alpha T. Bad analogies. Don't mind me. Miami, minus one and a half. We continue on our merry way. One more play before we start getting a little bit wonky. And this one still goes in the lean category because I couldn't find the number. I was hoping more props for the morning were going to get posted. Alas, earwax. It's a Harry Potter joke for the people. Pretty beats every flavored jelly beans. I don't know where my brain goes sometimes, but the Texas Rangers, Dane Dunning on the mound here. We're still waiting, wishing, hoping you believed in superstitions here, trying to get this game a line. Kind of brought it back around there. Chris Murphy, probably who you're running into. It's going to be a lot of a bullpen situation here from Boston in some capacity. I want to start piecing that together, but... It just creates me only assessing Dane Dunning going out there in Fenway tomorrow. And a 270 expected batting average, just a 15.8% carry G. Who could make him punish from the left side when he's giving up lots of power? Oh, Rafael Devers, who it seems like ends up on the card here all the time. Now, pesky pull, despite being the short porch out to right, just in that little gap in Boston, it's actually playing a, a little bit more difficult for lefty power. It's more up for righty power, which is contrary because there's no wall whatsoever on the right side of that field, and it's only a massive wall on the left side. Very fascinating stuff with Fenway Park breaking it down, and also the wind funnels a little bit. The other direct... It's a whole thing. Boston Red Sox, though, definitely looking at the left and power of Tristan Cassis. Jaron Duran Duran, who's actually got a 47% hard hit percentage this season. Need to start getting that launch up, buddy. Still sub 10 degree launch angle. Um, Masataka Yoshida, Alex Verdugo, lots of lefties that we could be paying attention to. The best of all of them, though, Rafael Devers. I basically, basically am going to have this on the card no matter what, because plus 350, there's no way this isn't going to be north of that. Once again, lefty power plays up or plays down in Fenway, so the numbers should be inflated. So be paying close attention. Dane Dunning, dun 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 Dunning, gonna get hit up in this spot. Said it gets a little bit brutal here. Oh, here we are. Zach Granke, Kenta Maeda. Thought I would have a play that would stand out in this one. Thought for sure. This is a difficult spot to assess. Do I want to go out of my way? To back Kenta Maeda in just his first, well, not first, or he's been back for a little bit now. It's been just a very limited sample size. It's been tough, but saying that he had his first, like, none completely bash, like, face bashing in against Detroit two games ago and still ended up in a, a pretty interesting fashion. Only went 83 pitches now and 82 against Atlanta last time out. Only gave up two were into Atlanta which is kind of an accomplishment at the moment. So suppose we should look at that. If it weren't for that 10 earned run game he had against the Yankees back before he got hurt, and well, that's when he got hurt, you would have had an opportunity to see a much better than a 6.23 ERA, 1.46 whip. In fact, just throw that off the table. He's been pretty good this season, but the number is just so crazy. Minus 190, don't want to be looking at it. Looks like it's going to be really good, hot, humid, uh, hitting weather with the wind blowing out slightly out to left. We'll see how much so. Hey, Mama and Papa Lindquist, boots on the ground to Target Field tomorrow. They're going to be enjoying themselves some baseball. I wish I could be there. That would be awesome. But I'm working for you people. You grateful, very kind, always nice to me on Twitter, people. As for uh, the other side of this one, Zach Granke, he's not good. 289 expected batting average, 41 expected slugging. And then, well, against right-handed pitching so far this season, Kansas City been dead last in baseball with a 79 WRC+. Plus. Do I want to go out of my way to back them? I just plus 167? No, no, I do not. But similar to just about everything I've been talking about as far as like just 
being nice and being aware that I'm doing the best I can for everything. Somebody's going to win between these two teams. And you could say, oh, Minnesota was free money. You could be like, oh, Kansas City was the value. It's always fun to say after the fact. But you know what? I'm just going to lean and avoid this game altogether with a total. Over eight and a half. Want to be paying attention to that weather. If I knew it was going to be the same weather tomorrow, that's what we have on Monday. I think this would definitely be a play purely because of Granky. Might has been a lot better, but Kansas City, can you add enough to the total for me to actually pull the trigger here? Probably not. Got it closer to nine at the moment. And that, we don't want to be playing half run games uh, too long in our lives on 15 game slates. So probably a pass here. Oh, to the game that everybody wanted to let me know about yesterday. Kyle Hendricks on the mound going up against Wade Miley. We got Cubbies. We got Brewers. Interesting little uh, battle of the who could care less arms, mainly because one's left-handed, throws it soft, doesn't do a whole lot. One's righty, throws it soft, doesn't do a whole lot. But they both limit hard contact in a very prominent way. That's why they survive and they're in the majors. 33.8% hard hit percentage for Kyle Hendricks. 33% nearly a percentage better for Wade Miley from the left side there. Both of them, no Ks whatsoever. 13.3% for Hendricks, 15% here for Wade Miley. And that creates a little bit of an issue because both of these teams do have pop from the side that they're going up against. So righties going to Milwaukee. You got Christian Yelich, of course, Rowdy Telez, even though it's been down for power. Jesse Winker's had a terrible season. It can only get better and only go up from there. Owen Miller, too. It's been a tough season, I would say, overall uh, for the Brewers, and they're still not exactly completely out of anything. I mean, what's the record here at the moment? It's one of the things where it's like standings, such an interesting thing. 46 and 39, still in a really good spot there in the NL, and I mean, for them, they just need to get Freddie Peralta back to where he was before. That would be good. That would be good for them. You need that one-two combo. Corbin Burns is going to be fine. But either way, Wade Miley on the other side. Lots of righty power that you could be looking at. And with great power comes great responsibility for guys like Saya Suzuki. Make contact with a 51% hard hit percentage. Dansby Swanson, 483 expected slugging. Nice to see the power numbers starting to trail back up to his Atlanta days. Remember when he was on Atlanta last year? As if Atlanta isn't good enough, if they had Dansby Swanson on that freaking baseball team, it would be night, night, lights out, go to sleep. Instead, we're just looking at an over of nine and leaning here. Both of these pitchers leaning uh, towards that over, but God, it is so hard to try to go into this pen from the Brewer side and feel any which way about it. And the Cubs, <laughs> they just keep blowing lead after lead after lead, spotting, getting spotted six and still losing multiple times now. Wild stuff from them, just staying away from this one in general. We got the Rockies, we've got the Houston Astros, and my, oh my, another disgusting, horrible baseball game. I have no idea if anything will end up showing up here, but I very highly doubt it, considering it's Brandon Bilak here for the Houston Astros, assumed to be up against Kyle Freeland here. And Freeland has been free money, honey, to be targeting from time to time. Now, he put up seven strikeouts against the Dodgers last time out. Six earned, ended up getting knocked up uh, towards the end of that one. No decision in that one. In fact, four and eight on the season. It's hard to be a Colorado starting pitcher. It just is. You're in Coors Field, and then you have a bad offense backing you. He doesn't have a win since the 14th of May. That's not fun because... It's July. He just skipped June. Just decided to write that one off entirely. But either way, I'm not really looking at Kyle Freeland as somebody that we want to be backing as a dog here and Colorado's lineup, even though getting healthier, finding some pieces, they need to just blow it all up. Send Chris Bryant, send Randall Grichik, send everybody but Ryan McMahon. Keep Ryan McMahon. Keep him in his 48.7% hard hit percentage. Good defensive glove there at third, 40, or 468 expected slugging. Strikes out a lot, but you can fix that. We can work with that. But literally send Chris Bryant and his sub-30% hard hit percentage out on a rail. Somebody's going to want him. CJ Crone probably too, even though I'm in love with that bat. I miss him in Minnesota. He hit lots of bombs. That was a fun bomba squad. That was good stuff. You guys don't care. Just reminiscing about actual good days for the Twins. But Brian Bilak, 50.6% hard hit percentage. 381 x woba 530 expected slugging. As disgusting as this is, it's not like I'm going out of my way to back Kyle Freeman, but I would be leaning plus one and a half here with the Rockies. Again, not just, it's not a backing of 
This game sucks. Let's just continue on our merry way. We have the Mets. We have the Diamondbacks going at it in Chase Field. Kadai Senga, our old friend Senga Genesis, our not friend and definitely not a friend of his ex-wife's. Google that one. Zach Davies. It's not Halloween, bro. Don't need a ghost, somebody that you used to love. Getting defensive. I'm sensitive. Kadai Senga, though, I uh, think... I think it's been going pretty well here backing him because eventually when these walks started to get trimmed down, you were going to see K's spike up. Now gone over his K prop in four straight games. We've laddered it up to eight. And you know what? He's hit eight, two of his last three. It's been nice stuff. I've only played two alternate lines on each, but that's a conversation for a different day. Actually, it's a conversation for this day because that's where we're going to end up rolling out there pretty quickly. I also want to throw this out there. Looking at a Mets play, I just think we might get some line movement in our direction and why Corbin Carroll did pinch hit on Sunday. So that's actually boding well, I think for his chances to be back in this lineup Tuesday, maybe you get the public seeing him back in it. And obviously he's a very good baseball player, but I have already sitting here expecting him to be in the lineup where I don't know if it's reflected in this line because he's truly, Truly one of the top three players in the National League so far this season, which is a wild, insane thing to say out loud, but it's just true. Ronald Acuna, some combination of Freddie Freeman, Matt Olson. They're like the same person. Matt Olson, it's more homers. Freddie Freeman, it's for average. Pick your poison, whatever. And then there's Corbin Carroll in some capacity. Acuna's first out of that group. But anyway, that's just the NL. Shohei Otani, congratulations on your MVP, Mr. Minus 1500 in the books. Yeah, I looked at it the other day, but I'm wasting time. Kadai Senga, we're going to be Senga Genesing our way, Sonic the Hedgehog style, up to 8Ks, just running it, just continue to keep running it out there. He's starting to get more comfortable. Oh boy, oh boy. Once these walks are trimmed down even further, we're going to start smashing some tens. I don't know what a Yankee Doodle Dandy looks like, but. Pretty sure it's me on the screen there right for you right now. Two free months of OS Premium Discord, my betting card. Celebrate your 4th of July in fantastic fashion by signing up for BetMGM in the link below. All you do, click on the link. It should already already put uh, promo code OS Insider in there when you click on it. But if it doesn't, just put OS Insider in there. You're going to get two free months of that premium Discord access. That's myself, Ben Raza, Aton Shander. If we bet something, it's going out in that premium Discord for the people. But that's not it. You're also getting up to $1,000 in bonus bets back into your account if your first bet doesn't win. So here's how it works. $100, you bet it. If it wins, you keep the money. Yay, everything's great. If you lose, you're going to get $100 back in bonus bets. Simple as that. You could bet as much or as little as you would like. You're going to get that money back in bonus bets no matter what happens. Yes, wins, you keep the money. Just put it in your pocket and run along. But BetMGM, great sports book, lots of great batter props. Been also showing up in some totals here of late. Always great to have as exposure to as many of these books as possible because they're competing for your business. Let them compete for your business by putting up the lines that they think might be able to bring people in, that they think might be advantageous because over a long period of time, we're going to win. That's how we do things here at Odd Chopper, friends. So check it out. BetMGM, really great stuff. Keep following Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. And hey, take anything from the card today, fire it up, up to $1,000. You're going to get it back in bonus bets if it doesn't hit. So that makes me feel good. That's a win-win, my friends. It's only if you're 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. All righty, y'all. Back to the picks. We got two offenses, and we also have two starting pitchers. I don't know what's going to win out, but it's going to be fun to watch. We got Aaron Nola in the Phillies on the mound up against Zach Eflin taking the bump there for the Rays. And he's been revelatory. Congrats to the Rays, just knowing what they're doing. That sinker-cutter combination... Uh, sinker cutter curve, basically a uh, three pitch sequence. It looks great. He's limiting hard contact 37.8%. He's got the 277 X Woba, which is just silly. He's never walked guys. And now he's got a 25.6% K rate. It's that spin baby broke it down the other day. Felt good. Felt good about backing Zach Eflin. And it went bad, went bad. I really don't know what to do with this game in any way, shape or form. And Aaron Nola, I think, you know, by now, I think you know by now he's pretty good at the old baseball yeah everything's fine with him 35.9 percent hard hit percentage 299 x woba now the k's have fallen a little bit off a cliff of late 
29.1% K rate last year, 23.9%, but it's still above average, still is a 3.63 ERA, expected ERA. Now, this is a tough spot, even going into Tampa, which we used to think about as a pitcher's park. It just has a lineup that is built of juggernauts. Then, yes, Isaac Paredes, he ended up getting dinged up. Don't think he's playing baseball in this one. They're still waiting on Brandon Lau to get his butt back out there, but... In the meantime, they just have Yandy Diaz, Randy Rosarena, Luke Rayley, Christian Bethencourt, 46.6% hard hit percentage, even Manuel Margot, 43.1% now on the season. But it's such a tough spot to want to do absolutely anything because of how good the Phillies are against righties on the other side, specifically with Marsh, Harper, Schwarber. You know the characters. Yeah. Don't really need to say anything else. 101 WRC plus there. I said something else against righties. I said something else there whatever over seven and a half it's a really low number considering the efficiency of these offenses. well not efficiency the absolute overall power of these offenses is what i'm getting at but don't think it's going to end up making the card maybe a prop or two one more lean and then we'll get back to the good stuff i promise we're going to go like like lean like with the homer in between it and then we're going to get ourselves the heck up out of here actually there's one game at the end but there's nothing to do with it seattle and san francisco that's what we're doing something with here Actually, we're not. We're just leaning and living our lives. Logan Gilbert on the mound here for Seattle. San Francisco, I think. I think it's going to be another bullpen situation like we've seen from them of late. Usually, that means that you kind of know the prime candidates of who could start. They just have to get officially announced at some point in time. That would be great. I think it's going to be Keaton Wynn. We did see him pitch back on the 29th. So I think he's had enough rest to be able to come in there. Went six innings strong in just 67 pitches, which is a wild outcome against the Toronto Blue Jays. Can he run it back against Seattle? I don't know. Another good pitcher's park, of course. But it's going to be primarily bullpen situations, and I usually like to back that with the other team, but I think we might get a discount on the Seattle money line when this line ends up dropping. If it's Keaton Wynn out there, I expect Logan Gilbert to be the favorite. Don't get me wrong, but... I think I really want to back him against San Francisco. A 296 X Woe, but 25% K rate. I think we're going to start seeing uh, some better stuff from Logan Gilbert than we've seen of late. I don't know, four earned against Washington. He had 11 ground balls, got babbipped to death. It was not enjoyable. Against Baltimore, fantastic stuff on the road because, of course, that's how it works. Get schlacked by Washington at home in your pitcher's park. Go on the road to Camden where it's playing up for lefty power and murder everybody. Fun stuff, this baseball. Friends, we're going to be leaning the Seattle money line. Maybe this one ends up being a play. Maybe it does not. Whew, we made it to some plays. and oh, It is a friend of mine, an old friend of mine, Tariq Scooball on the mound for the Detroit Tigers. J.P. Sears on the other side, a pitcher that we have been backing for the Oakland Athletics. There aren't many of them. Him and Paul Blackburn basically the list but a 340x well but 477 expected slug and that's not all great and hunky dory but he does have a 23.9 percent k rate what i get concerned about is yes detroit starting to hit up on lefties a little bit i think they're going to be about the the major league average number very very shortly 98 wrc plus with just a 22.3 percent k rate against lefties on the season and jp series just happens to be a god fearing man doing that thing left-handed i I'm not lefty that looks stupid i'm never doing that again Tariq scuba also left-handed hey, hey, hey this bit has no purpose it's just what it is uh we saw him once upon a time in a land far away in 2022 with a 3.34 expected era he was awesome one of my favorite pitchers to be backing mainly because detroit was atrocious terrible but you would get him in spots where they were laying a run and a half and you were getting plus money to back, I thought, the better pitcher almost every single time. And over a long period of time, we're going to be backing starting pitching. Hope you noticed that, by the way, that I talked through analysis. Huge part of what I do. And then breaking down bullpens time to time because you just never know how the pieces are going to fit together. If you have elite bullpens, we know who they are. We have elite pitchers. We know we know the Josh Haters that exist. We know the Bautistas that exist, the, the, the Lopez's. We know all of these guys from the pen. We can identify them. Penn's terrible on both of these baseball teams. Actually, Detroit, not as bad as you would think. But Oakland, definitely horrendous. Uh, one of the worst pens that we've had in recent memory. Think Phillies a couple years ago. Think, yeah, that's about as bad as I can possibly think of something. Uh, think of, like, I don't know, the Cubs lately. 
I don't know. Detroit money line is what I'm getting at. Tariq Skubal, as I'm looking at his numbers here from AAA, uh, he made a couple of spot starts. Everything across the board looked pretty decent there. He pitched AAA Toledo. Uh, we had a lot of different buildups for it, but 1.23 ERA during a rehab assignment, 20 to 3 K to walk ratio. Think he's back, baby. Think he's back. Want to be jumping in early and often on Tariq Skubal. Yeah, minus 165 seems like a lot. I'm also probably going to put a run line play on this too. Probably just going to have a little bit more on the money line. I'm thinking about getting aggressive beyond just the like here. But Detroit money line has to be one of my favorite plays on the board tomorrow. The Los Angeles Angels heading down the freeway from Anaheim to St. Diego. You all know the joke. Shohei Otani on the mound going up against Joe, Joe Musgrove. Uh, these are two really good pitchers. Uh, first of all, Shohei Otani... Over 30 jacks, top 10 pitcher in baseball, absurd stuff. Splitter is one of the top three pitches in baseball. Bowen dudes down, just lights out against the White Sox the other night. Scooping another win, three ERA, 1.04 whip. Three ERA, one whip, and 30 plus homers already. We're just past the halfway point. What? It's so dumb. And Joe Musgrove on the other side. Don't besmirch the good name of Joe Musgrove. 30.5% hard hit percentage. Just a 21.7% K rate this season, but still doing everything ex exceptionally well. Only a 5% barrel percentage to go with it. Guys, there are not enough runs that are going to be scored in this one. Under 7.5. Producer Jacob tried to mock me and just say, oh, just say under 7.5. Two good pitchers on the mound. <laughs> He's not nice, guys. He's actually very nice. He's a lovely human. Happy 4th of July, everybody. Under seven and a half. Oh, I hate everybody. I wish I was partying down in San Diego tomorrow. We got the Braves. We got the Guardians. We're gonna be a party in Cleveland. I wish I was not partying in Cleveland tomorrow. They might be partying if uh, Shane Bieber continues to give up hard contact because we'll probably just have a lot of homer props on the Atlanta side. Colby Allard going for them. Who? <laughs> this guy... I am very happy with it at the moment. If uh, you guys caught my update on Twitter the other day, Lindy's Leans Likes Locks, we do that over here on the Odd Trapper channel. Lindy's Locks update, I do that over on my Twitter, at Eric Lindquist. Just put in my name. You'll find me. Come follow me. Come hang out. But I also just threw this freebie out there on Twitter for everybody. Atlanta, we were on them heavy. We also ended up on the over of Colby Allard uh, strikeouts against that putrid Minnesota lineup, my team, of course. Of course, I just slam against my own team and win because... That's apparently what I have to do from time to time. But hey, money knows no alliances, no allegiances. That's the word I was looking for. 8Ks from Colby Allard. That came out of nowhere for a dude for kind of traditionally around a 20% K rate, 19% K rate for his career. So we're just not that interested in backing his Ks or anything. It was a one-time deal based on that Minnesota lineup and that Minnesota lineup alone. So if you saw that update, don't want you to just automatically think that I am blindly backing him tomorrow in the same department. That is not the case. But I am going to target Shane Bieber for the first time in probably a long time with maybe not just a money line play. Because again, I kept that off here. But Ronald Acuna has been the NL MVP so far this season. We talked about it a little bit during that Corbin Carroll segment, but I just want to reiterate how stupid the advanced metrics are on Ronald Acuna over the course of this season. <clears throat> Very dumb. How's that for advanced metrics? Thank you. 336 average, overall 1 OPS, 21 homers, and uh, I don't know, added another stolen base to make it 40 on the season. like Lee Trevino and Happy Gilmore. Ronald Acuna to Homer. We like it, but it's going to be a lean until we see the number. Better than plus 270. I think we get that against Shane Bieber. Name recognition be damned when you're giving up the amount of hard hit he is this season. Two games to go, my friends. Hit that like button. Good karma for your 4th of July. You know, be careful. With the grill, with the fireworks, lots of things can happen on that 4th of July. Be especially safe if you're on a boat. Love you all. Can't wait to talk to you again on the 5th. Yeah. A lot of days ahead, friends, but depends. This is going to be an interesting pitching matchup here, and uh, <clears throat> I get a lot of people want to blindly back Toronto here, no doubt about it. I totally get it. I get why they're favored, but I don't agree with it. Lucas Giolito on the mound going up against Chris Bassett, and Bassett had a phenomenal outing against San Francisco last time out. Six innings, 12 Ks, 
three hits. Mm, just ridiculous. Just ridiculous stuff. But a 4.06 ERA and a 1.2 whip. And also, I don't think that strikeout stuff is in any way sustainable. We're talking about a 22.1% carry for him on the entire season. Lucas Giolito, much better in that department, 26.1%. A better walk rate at 7%. So he strikes out more people. He has a lower walk rate. He's been only getting better and better and better as the entire season's been going along, just like the White Sox, because they couldn't be any worse at the time. Had a very difficult spot against the Angels. Got into a little bit of a bind there. Did go seven innings in that one. Only gave up six hits. A little surprising to see the bad luck loss there, but plus 108 here? Really? Seems a little bit big for me. I've got it closer to even money. That's just good enough, friends. Again, you got to be shopping for the best line here. I don't want it anywhere other than that plus 108 type number or better. And I think we might get it. So uh, this might be another wait and see approach. Maybe you get this north of plus 110, plus 115. Maybe our friends from up north, hey, they give us a little bit of a gift. Bet them down. Come on, public. Get after Chris Bassett because I do not think he's good. Well, at least not as good as we saw last time out. No line going out with a bang, friends. Yeah, you heard me. This sucks. This is going to have to be a, hey, hit me up on Twitter. Ask me the questions. I will try to get you the answers, and I'm sorry if I don't see your comment. A lot more comments that I've been getting uh, people asking questions of late. That's normally what happens when you have a good June, a really good June, and people start listening to you, and then they start getting mad at you when one play doesn't hit in their parlay, and then it is what it is. Or multiple plays, because the last two days have sucked. But either way, we're looking over here at Emmett Sheehan. I think that's the starting pitcher for the Dodgers. We've backed him a lot here of late. Going up against Luis Ortiz, <clears throat> we have not been backing him like ever. And this is going to be a straightforward Los Angeles Dodgers smash fest here on I almost said Christmas. On the 4th of July, friends, Emmett Sheehan is very good. 2.65 ERA, 0.82 whip. And I have to point it out because I did short his case the last time out, and I feel a little bit dirty about it. Four and a half ends up beating me by the hook. It all came down to the change-up usage. And I'm pretty sure if this ends up as a lock, which it has a very good chance of doing, then I'm going to be breaking down what exactly Emmett Sheehan did in that last outing in Coors Field that impressed me so much. Again, these are the things I want to do, but we're already at like 35 minutes or something crazy here at the producer Jacobs. We got to go, friends. We got partying to do. No, I don't. I'm going to be working tomorrow. Jacob is too. Great stuff. Just kidding. Los Angeles Dodgers minus one and a half. See you tomorrow. Just a lean, but get ready for it. Get ready for it. And that does it for a 4th of July edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays on the board for this uh, lovely Tuesday slate that we have. 15 games going on throughout the day. I'm going to be updating my betting card in that premium Discord nonstop. Check out BetMGM. You get two months of that for free just by trying out their product as well as a first bet that will get back to you in bonus bets up to $1,000 if it doesn't hit. That first bet alone. Yes, first bet. Second one, no. But first bet, up to a thousand bucks. Good stuff. Only if you're 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1 800 Gambler. All righty, y'all. Have a very safe, very fun 4th of July, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I appreciate you. America's pretty great sometimes. There's some stuff we want to do better at, but it's a pretty great spot to be. Hey, I get to bet and watch baseball all day tomorrow. I think I'll be okay with it. Until next time, my friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Tuesday.